망. 하 e v e r y b o d y Tim Higgins, Secretary for District 25, um, and tonight we are foregoing, uh, skipping over our normal 25 with Tech 25, because this week is the ICE Conference, um, the Illinois Computing Educators Conference uh, held over in St. Charles, uh, just kind of all about all things technology in the classroom, and so we're looking to do a couple of different things over the next few days, next few weeks, uh, to highlight that, to try to pass along some of those cool ideas, the cool information, knowledge to you. Um, one of the really cool things is that we have several uh, teachers in our district, Carrie Bauckham, uh, Joy Kerr, and Trisha Fugelstad from our district, who are actually presenting at the conference. And so here's a little bit of a preview of uh, an explanation as to what they will be presenting on at ICE. I'm fortunate this year to be giving a workshop on Genius Hour slash Passion Project slash 20% Time, whatever you want to call it or you and your students want to call it. It's what it is, so the different versions of it, what people are doing with Genius Hour or what they're doing with it in their specific classroom, why we should be giving up the time, giving up the time to students, and then how. So exactly how, how to begin, what materials to use, how to have the students reflect, how to have them share, should you grade it or should you not, all the different little minutia that people need to figure out when they're going to be planning something for this in their classroom. Hi you guys, I'm Carrie Bauckham. I'm the 6th, 7th, and 8th grade Extended Resource Program teacher at South Middle School, and this is Game On, a beginner's guide for gamifying your classroom cheat codes. This year, I'm so excited to be presenting at the Illinois Computing Educators Conference, or ICE Conference, and I'm presenting on this, Gamifying Your Classroom. Gamification is the idea of using rewards, quests, bonuses, competition, achievement levels, and virtual currency to encourage collaboration, fun, focus, predict productivity, creativity, and meaningful choices. It encourages the development of desired behaviors with immediate feedback. And best of all, it's using those best parts and reasons why we all love games so much to bring out the very best in our students. You want to start by thinking of a goal for your students. Big picture goal. What student do you want to leave your classroom at the end of the year? What goal do you have your students? What do you want to, them to improve on? Next, you want to start defining um, how your students are going to earn points. And you do this by asking yourself questions like, based on my goal, what skills do my students need to, need to achieve these goals? Or what skills do I want my points to reinforce? And what skills do your students need to have so that they can achieve the goals that you've set? Next, it's time to pick a theme. Think about games you know, the ones you love. Think about which ones are your favorites and why you love to play them. Don't be afraid to mix and match more than one game to gamify your classroom. Last, it's time to design your game. And this is where there really are no limits on how much fun or creativity you want to bring to, the game, to gamifying your classroom. You want to start by thinking of 10 simple questions. Will it be team? Will your game be a team or a single game? Will play, how will players earn their points? How will you give out points? What will students be able to do with their points? What will your game board or game space look like? How will you display the leaderboard or, a student, or the game progress? Will you have tokens, power-ups, badges, or fun add-ons? What will your marketplace be? Will your game include mini challenges or quests? Will your game have bonuses? When gamifying your classroom, there really are no rules. Start small or start big. Try it for two weeks. Try it for a project. Try it for a quarter. Bring as much fun and as much creativity as you want to to it. And just remember, when you're trying gamification, like any good game or any app, there can always be updates. List on this slide is a link to a, a drive folder that holds resources that I will be sharing at, ICE, at my ICE presentations. There's also a link to the presentation itself. And if any anytime any of you guys have any questions or want to idea talk about gamifying your classroom, please, 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 please um, just send me an email.
Hi, I'm Trisha Fugelstad. I teach K-5 art at Dryden Elementary. I'm going to be presenting at ICE Conference a presentation called Make It Physically and Extend It Digitally. So I'm going to talk about techniques that start as physical art making or a physical experience and then continue on in some sort of digital way to extend the learning. I'm going to start by looking at a spooky landscape painting. Now this project I've done with second grade in the past and the idea is that we try to show foreground, middle ground, and background. Our ghost was in the foreground with overlapping. Our house, our spooky house, was in the middle ground and our sky, moon, bat, clouds were all part of the background. And in doing all this, students were exploring concepts of landscape. But I thought to make it more spooky, we can get rid of the ghost. And if we got rid of the ghost in the foreground, I can do two different things digitally. So what we did is we painted our landscape without a ghost in the foreground. So we still were learning about overlapping and landscape, with just one piece missing. But we brought that one piece back through animation. And when we did this, we were able to extend our, um, the learning that we had in the art room by teaching a flipbook animation, how to move it across the screen. This is over a digital picture of their finished painting. And at the same time, talk about the word transparency in a more dynamic way. Fifth graders made light up robots and the robots were lighting up because we added a circuit behind them. And since these robots needed some sort of interaction to really fully understand them, we made a movie that extended the experience of our physical art. But then we can also make some other extended animations to play with the digital version of our finished robots. We also took the digital version of our robot and put it on the cover of a Newsweek template that I created in order for them to tell the story of their robot. So here's some of the things that our fifth graders came up with. So we extended the learning digitally from something that began physically. So I hope you could find something useful in this presentation no matter what curriculum you're teaching. Thank you, Joy, Carrie, and Trisha for taking the time to make those little preview videos for us. Um, and to everybody watching this, um, we are going to do our best to, to share all of the knowledge that's flying around ICE. It's not just for the people who are attending. We want um, these ideas, this knowledge, these tips and tricks to be shared out uh, to everybody. It's really a great resource. Um, and so we're going to be doing that a couple different ways. One, keep an eye out for 25 with Tech 25 videos. Um, we'll be doing one live from ICE in the next two days. Uh, we will also, in the following weeks, um, be doing have some guests in, and we'll be doing some more videos uh, here from district office, all about the cool stuff that you know we learned at ICE and think that everybody will benefit from. Um, and then also on Twitter, uh, actually throughout the day tomorrow and Friday, you'll be able to follow the hashtag ICE16, which is ICE, the conference's official hashtag, as well as D25Learns, um, which is the district's um, our hashtag. Uh, so check those out. And then next week and in the following days, um, talk to the people in your building. Every building has uh, people out there who will be going to ICE, um, and they will be bringing back and looking to share uh, some of the cool things. So start the conversation with them. They will, um, I'm sure, be more than happy to, uh, to share what they learned. And so uh, take it easy. We'll uh, see you soon.